mad as the sea and wind who wrote the ten, which is the mightier. In his lawless fit, behind the arrows, hearing something stir, whips out his rapier, cries, a rat, a rat, and then his brainish apprehension kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us, had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us whose providence sh should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt. This mad young man, but so much was our love, we would not understand what was most fit. But like the owner of a foul disease, to keep it from divulging, let it feed, even on the pith of earth life. Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed. The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we will ship him hence in this vile deed. I have sent to seek him and to find the body. How dangerous is it that this man goes loose? Yet must not we put the strong law on him. He's loved of the distracted multitude, who's like not in their judgment but their eyes. And where tis so, the offender's scourge is weighed, but never the offense. To bear all smooth and, smooth and even, this sudden sending him away must seem deliberate pause, disease's desperate groan, by desperate appliance are re re relieved. When the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. Now Hamlet, where is Polonius? In heaven, send hither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him I the other place yourself. But if I indeed you find him not within this month, you shall notice him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Hamlet, this deed, for thine especial safety, which we do tender as we dearly grieve, for that which thou hast done, we send thee hence. With fiery quickness, therefore, prepare thyself. The bark is ready, and the wind at help. Thy associates tend, and everything is bent for England. For England? Aye, Hamlet. Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed aboard. Delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. Away, for everything is sealed and done. That else leans on the affair. Pray you make haste. Go, oh, Captain, from me greet this Danish king. Tell him that, by his license, Horton Bross craves conveyance of a promise marched over his kingdom. You know the rendezvous. If that his majesty will alt with us, we shall express our duty in his eye and let him know so. How all occasions do a form against me. My thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. To her good she was spoken with, for she may strew dangerous conjectures and ill breathing minds. Say you? Nay, pray you, Mark. He is dead and gone, lady, he is dead and gone. At his head a grass green turf, at his heels a stone. Oh, God. Nay, but Ophelia. Pray you, Mark, let his shroud as the mountain snow. Pray you, Ophelia. Indeed, without an oak I'll make an inorns. By guess and by St. Charity, the lack and fight for shame, young men will do as if they come to it, by cock they are to burn. Quoth she, before you tumble me, you promised me to wed. He answers, so what I had done by young, by younger son, and thou hast not come to my bed. Where is my father? Dead. How came he dead? I will not be juggled with. To hell allegiance, vows to the blackest devil, conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. To this point I stand that both the worlds I give to negligence. Let come what comes, only I'll be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Good, Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your f dear father's death, it is written in your revenge. That swoopstake you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser. None but his enemies. Why, now you speak, like a good child and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death, and m am most sensible in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment pierce, as day does to your eye. Break not your sleeves for that. You must not think that we are made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger and think it past home. You shortly shall hear more. I loved your father, and we love ourselves, and that, I hope, will teach you to imagine. Letters, my lawyer, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, this to the queen. From Hamlet? Who brought them? Sailors, my lord, they say. I saw them not. They were given me by Claudio. He received them of that that brought them. Laertes, you shall hear of them. Leave us. I'm lost in it, my lord. But let him come. 
It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth, thus did it thou, to cut his throat in the church. No place indeed should murder sanctuaries. I will do it, and for that purpose I anoint my sword with the contagion that if I gall him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think of this. Weigh what convenience both of time and means may fit, uh, may fit us to our shape. If this should fail, and then our drift look through our bad performance, twere better not to say, therefore, this project should have a back or second that might hold. If this should blast in proof, soft, let me see. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have it. When in your motion you are hot and dry, as make your bouts more violent to that end, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce. Whereon, whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venom stump. One well doth tread upon another's heel. So fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Till that her garments, heavy with her drink, pull the poor wretch from her medallious leg to muddy death. Too much of water, haste thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. But yet it is our trick, nature her custom holds. Let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. I do, my lord. I have a speech of fire that plays, but this folly doubts it. Let's follow, Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow.